So this is the X-Tool D1, and it might be the nicest diode laser I've ever tested. Let's jump in and see why. What is up? I am Brandon and welcome to my shop. We've got lots of lasers in here and real excited because we get to check out this brand new one from X-Tool, the MakeBlock D1. This is a diode laser. They have a five watt and a 10 watt version. This is actually the 10 watt. Overall, this thing is really nice. So on the assembly side of things, this actually comes in a pretty small box. It basically comes in five major sections. All the electronics and stuff are already built into it. And then plug in a few of the wires to control the stepper motors, as well as a wire to actually control your laser. But you can see from taking it out of the box to actually having it running, it maybe took me 30 to 45 minutes. And a lot of that was because I was filming it too. So it took me a little bit longer. Okay, so let's talk about the construction overall. So first off, the biggest thing that I noticed is gonna be a common trend throughout this entire review is this it's just built really really well putting this together and this isn't like a lot of the other laser companies where a diode machine is really the only thing they sell you can see because they've built a lot of things in the past they've built co2 machines before they are bringing a lot of that manufacturing know-how and putting it into a unit like this case in point the entire frame is actually steel they're still using belts and stepper motors to actually drive everything but actually the wheels are solid steel and they actually run on these steel rods so this movement is actually really smooth Smooth. I really like that their belts for the most part are hidden. On a lot of other machines, you'll have those like on the top and they're exposed, but actually these are on the insides as well as some rods here right in the front to drive the whole machine. So overall, this runs off of two stepper motors. You've got one right here that is moving it in the X and you actually have another one that is on the inside right here that is driving it along the Y axis. This is not an automatic Z axis. There are a couple of diode machines that will auto focus. So they'll actually move the laser head up and down. One of the coolest features that I found with this right off the bat is how they actually focus it. Because with any laser, focus is going to be a really big deal. And so to focus this guy, there is a screw on the side right here. You just unscrew it and it slides up and down but you still need to figure out how far to actually have this above your material. Some other machines will actually give you a distance and then you'll usually have to measure it or you'll have to cut out a little jig to figure it out. But this one is really nice because there's actually this little guy right here that pops down. You can see it goes down just a little bit further um, than this protective covering around the laser. You drop that to the material where it's touching, then you screw it down, and then you just pop this right back up and then that is at the right distance for this material. And you can see this actually has a pretty good range in terms of the Z-axis. So um, you can get some really thick material. You have a good bit of movement. You can really just tell a lot of thought was put into the design for something like this, which doesn't seem like a lot, um, but makes a really big difference and is super convenient to give you a really good result. And you know what? There's even like a little magnet that closes this shut on the top and the bottom. So that's just real cool. Now, the only drawback I've seen so far is that this cabling right here runs underneath the machine and they give you some zip ties to make sure the cabling is snug up against the frame so it's not getting caught when this thing is moving. But this one, you really don't have anything right here. And so you just need to make sure and tuck it away because you definitely could get the laser on top of it which would not be great. But really that's the only thing I've seen on the actual mechanical side of stuff that is a potential drawback. And really that's not even that big of a deal because you can just move the cable out of the way. All right, so let's talk about some overall specs. So the max speed that you can run this is 10,000 millimeters per minute, which winds up being close to 167 millimeters per second, um, which is at the top end of a diode machine. Um, the only other one that I know of that is that fast is the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. And we'll actually talk about that one more in a minute. And I've actually done a full review if you wanna check that one out as well. For the laser, this is a 10 watt unit. They also have a five and a half watt unit. And so obviously the price changes depending on which one you get, but the one we're actually testing is the higher end 10 watt. Now, not only does this 10 watt unit give you a lot of power, it also gives you the smallest laser dot. But with this one, instead of a single diode emitter, there's actually two. There's one that's shooting down and there's another shooting from the side that gets bounced off a 45 degree mirror. So actually this laser module is bigger than anything that I've seen. And obviously this is more powerful than anything I've tested as well. In fact, this is actually just a cheaper add-on for like a CNC router style. Um, this one is only two and a half watt, but you can see the size comparison just between these two, how much of a difference that makes. And even when you step this one up to a five and a half watt, it's not nearly as big as this guy. And because of that cooling is going to be a bigger issue and they have a pretty good size PC fan here at the very top. It's not 
super loud as I actually power this up. Now when I edit the video, some of this will probably get taken out, but if I get close, Really the only sound that you're gonna hear even when this is running um, is gonna be that fan. You'll hear the stepper motors a little bit. So this isn't completely silent, but compared to especially like a CNC router, this is very, very quiet uh, when it's actually running. Now, both on the 10 and the five and a half watt version, the actual laser dot is going to be 0.08 millimeters. That is actually the smallest that I've seen on any of these diode modules. And that again, just has to go into some of the crazy optics that they throw into that. But usually you'll see 0.08 in one of the directions, but not in two. Usually you'll get like a rectangular dot versus an actual square. And really at the end of the day, what all of that means is you're just gonna get a more precise image. You're gonna get better raster engraves. So like actual picture images, um, and then, you're gonna get better cutting capability because the actual focus point is smaller. And then on the work area side of things, you're looking at 432 by 406 millimeters, which is about 17 by 16 inches. And in general, with these style machines, that's usually one of the biggest benefits is just how big of a work area. I mean, that's like a really, really good size. Uh, you can see also it doesn't weigh very much. Uh, it's really easy to pick up. But that big work area means that you can put really big pieces inside of here and engrave. Um, so this is just like a 12 by 12 sheet of plywood. And so that is going in there fine. Again, there's plenty of space for this. This isn't the best setup, but there'll be footage on top of here that you can see what's going on. Also, another nice feature about this is you can see it is raised up on these little legs. So because of that, you could actually put material through here that may be too big either long or wide for this machine. So you can just slide this through and you're still gonna be good to go. And then that actually gets us to controlling the machine. Now to actually tell where this is going to fire, if I turn this back on, you can see you're getting a red laser, like a crosshair. Uh, and this is actually like a red laser pointer. And then when we throw it into the software, that's giving you a good idea of where this is going to fire. So then on the software side of things, this comes with its own custom software that's called LaserBox Basic. This is actually the exact same software that they use use on their laser box, their bigger CO2 machine. And again, I did a review of that machine right up there. And the software does a good job. I mean, it covers all of the basics from cutting to engraving, the setting speed and power, as well as being able to draw really simple artwork and then importing images. But overall, I would say the software is really the only drawback potentially with this machine, just that that is what you have to use. So I personally really like to use Lightburn, which is a paid purchase, but it is an awesome piece of software. Or there's even free software out there like Laser or Gerbil. Now on the positive side of things, you actually don't need the internet to run their software. Now that is compared to probably the most popular laser you've seen advertised online, the Glowforge, where their entire software is web-based. So you cannot run your machine without being connected to the internet. But on the Xtool side of things, it is just a piece of software that you download that is free, uh, that works for Mac, PC, and I even think Linux. And you can control it just with a simple ethernet port right here, right to your computer. But then it also has a little Wi-Fi antenna that you can see right here that's hooked up to their motherboard. And that's not Wi-Fi to get onto the internet, that's just Wi-Fi to connect directly to your computer. Uh, which I find really helpful, especially if you have your computer just in a different spot of your shop and you don't wanna move it around. Now, a few things you're not gonna get with this that you would with like a higher end CO2 laser, this is just open air. So when this is running, you are directly exposed to the laser beam. And actually they've done a fairly good job with that because they've put this cover to help shield your eyes, but still some of that light is gonna bleed out. And so they give you safety glasses, which you always wanna be wearing when it's running. Usually they're super cheap, and these are probably still pretty cheap, but they fit, especially over my glasses, so I can wear both at the same time and not look really goofy. Uh, at least more than normal. And if you're running this in a shop to where it's not just yourself, you have to be really conscious of the other people there, but you're also exposed to the dust and the fumes. So with larger CO2 machines, you usually have a duct in the back that has a fan that you can hook up some pipes, and then you can run all that smoke and those fumes outside. If you wanna do something like that with this, you would have to build a custom cover to it, hook up a fan, and then exhaust out the exhaust. Now for me, I'm actually in our garage and I usually have just a bunch of fans running, just blowing it out the big garage door. So that's not a big issue for me, but just know if you're going to have this inside, you want to think through how are you going to get the fumes outside of your location. Now, another thing that you'll see with larger CO2 machines is an air assist. And that is literally just a pipe with compressed air that is constantly shooting at where the laser beam is going, that is putting out 
flare-ups. That isn't as big of an issue with diode machines, but those flare-ups can definitely happen. Actually, I did a full video with a five and a half watt machine showing how quickly you could light something on fire. Just know fire can be an issue, especially if you are cutting something out. You never want to leave when this is running. You always want to be actively watching it just in case something happens. And then you definitely want to have at least a fire extinguisher close. This is like 20 to 30 bucks that could potentially save your entire house. Now let's talk about some of the features that other diode machines have, especially on the safety side of things. Um, usually you're gonna have some type of emergency stop, and I believe that's what this button does. And then normally with diode lasers, if they detect any type of motion, um, then the laser beam just cuts off. Now they do advertise that this motherboard has a motion sensor in it. I've actually moved this around and it hasn't killed the laser beam. And again, I don't know if that's something they're planning on adding in the future. I've actually asked them, and as soon as I find out, I'll make sure and leave information about it down below. And then one other thing that is advertised but I haven't been able to test out as well is they actually have a smartphone app and then import images and run the machine from a phone um, which would be really nice so again this is pre-release so it's just not out yet so I just haven't had a chance to check it out and let you know so I've got the machine on so you can probably hear it now but let's actually jump into the software so this is what it looks like when you open it up. Uh, like I said, it's pretty basic for the most part, but it definitely gets the job done. Um, I'm actually connected over wireless, so you can see this right here, uh, but then you can also connect it just with uh, USB here on the side. Okay, so here at the top, you can see kind of your basic controls, um, your pin tool, and then your insert. Uh, so let's just do like a simple uh, star. So basically you select your object, then over here on the right, um, you can select all of your settings to actually cut or engrave something out. And then they already have some pre-built materials built in. I'm using, I think, birch plywood, but basswood should work fine. You can crank this all the way up to 180, which is right at that max of 10,000 millimeters per minute. Start. This is gonna let you position the laser. So right now you guys can see that crosshair. Um, that cross here is pointing to wherever this little blue dot is. So I'm actually going to move this blue dot to the center because now I can draw a frame around it. And then because it's on Wi-Fi, then let's come over here and hit the actual start button on the machine. All right, so this is finished up. And there you can see that we've got our nice wood that has been engraved. Okay, so let's actually talk about what this can engrave and cut out. First off, this can both engrave and both cut. Typically with a diode machine, you're really not gonna cut a ton. Uh, you definitely can with really thin material or soft wood like basswood, corrugated paper, or cardboard, um, or even with leather. Um, but just know most of the time you're gonna be doing engraving because if you are gonna cut, it is gonna go pretty slow. But on the engraving side of things, it has been doing a great job. So, so you can see I just did some text. This is a test. Uh, and this circle actually isn't cut out from this. This was from a different machine, um, but we'll get to cutting here in a second. And then I also did a few different size differences so you can see some of the detail about how small you can get. Specifically, this one did a really good job and then it's starting to get a little bit too small for you to be able to tell what's going on. Uh, but I mean, that's really, really good in terms of detail and the type of focus that you can get. Now, you can also do images. Now, I'm gonna show you a bigger one here in a minute, um, but this was just a test sample. I always wind up engraving the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, pretty much any diode laser that I do and you can see it does a really good job. And actually in the software, they have a bunch of different settings in terms of ways that it can mimic a grayscale image. And then also you can change around the lines per inch or the lines per centimeter. So I think this was running at like 100 uh, lines per centimeter. And then you can go all the way up to 300. So uh, you can get basically three times the detail that I'm getting right here. A lot of that's also gonna be dependent on the material that you're using as well as your actual cut settings. Now it can also do leather. And so this is just my logo on leather. And actually I had messed up the settings too. So uh, even though this wasn't engraved, you can definitely tell that it can cut through, but this isn't like a good example because I was just trying to engrave it, just too much power. Uh, but it actually gives you a really good result on leather if you're wanting to put brands or names or whatever onto a piece of leather. And then actually one of my favorite things is, this is a little, I think it's just like a thin piece of acrylic. Uh, and these are just example materials that they give you. And so uh, this is just a card, again, with my logo on it. And it's not quite white. And I kind of like that in this black. 
And then just to show you that you definitely can cut stuff out, uh, this is just a square that I cut out of basswood. And I usually find that basswood is gonna be your best bet if you're wanting to use a dial laser to cut shapes out, just because it's basically the softest wood that you can use. This was actually in one pass, but typically uh, when you're using any other type of wood that even is at a quarter of an inch thick, um, you'll have to do multiple passes. And you can tell like right here, uh, you'll start to get some charring on the edges. So a lot of times if you're gonna cut things out, you're gonna to want to put some type of paper mask on top of it. And the last material type that I tested out with this unit is metal. Now I always get questions about metal and people ask, can a dial laser or can a CO2 laser, can that engrave metal? And the answer is no, but it's usually with a caveat. So actual bare metal, this is not gonna be able to do. So if you have just straight up steel or raw aluminum, um, you will need a fiber laser to actually do that. And those lasers are generated in a completely different way. Here's like a quick image of it firing. But typically what people are asking is, can this engrave stainless steel, um, which this is, and they provide you a sample. So you can definitely see that it will engrave stainless steel. And really it's any type of metal that has a coating on top of it, um, then you're gonna be able to engrave that coating. There's also a material called Ceramark that you can put on raw material that basically does that same process. And then when you engrave it, you'll get something similar. And then if you're doing things like tumblers, a lot of times those are powder coated with like a color on top. So you can definitely do those. And to do tumblers, they actually do provide a rotary. Um, that's on the way. I haven't had a chance to review that yet, but I will. Now, another one that I did, and actually this is usually where I find the best result for images, uh, just because you can get a really good black on cardboard. Again, that is the Mandalorian, and there is my finger for just a size comparison. But you get some great detail, even at an image that small. But let's actually see what that looks like a good bit bigger, and we're gonna engrave that on birch plywood right now. So while this is engraving, I wanna let you know that this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an awesome online learning platform where you can learn a ton of different things, especially around the creative fields. And Skillshare is a great place to learn tools like Illustrator and Photoshop. If you ever need to create logos or graphics from scratch or manipulate images and then bring them in so you can laser engrave them. Skillshare is running a deal right now where the first thousand people that sign up with my link down below will get one month free. So make sure and check that out. And one class has actually been really useful for me, especially with Adobe Illustrator. So when I'm making graphics and bringing them into the laser, and that is mastering Illustrator 10 tips and tricks to speed up your workflow. This is from DKNG Studios. So even though I've used Illustrator a bunch over the years, I definitely picked up some tips that I'm using now. So be sure and check out Skillshare supporting them also supports this channel. Okay, this is wrapping up. Let's jump in and see how it did. All right, so you can see we've got our Mandalorian finished up and it did a pretty good job. And actually with this birch plywood, um, the grain is pretty pronounced. So like you can definitely see it in there. Speaking of other diode lasers, the price point for this puts it pretty close to the Otour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro. And when I compare the two, the big difference is just the overall build quality of this is just nicer. The frame is nicer, the steel V wheels and the steel rods, um, everything is just constructed really nice. Now, Otour is coming out with a double diode laser module um, that's 10 watts, so just like this one. So as of right now, this one is actually more powerful than what you can get with Otour. And really the only con I would see with this machine is just you are kind of locked into their software. With pretty much any other diode laser, I wind up using software like Lightburn, um, which is paid, or you can get free versions of software like Laser Gerbil. Um, but if you're going the Xtool route, you'll have to stick with their software, LaserBox, um, which definitely does everything you need it to do. Um, but if you really want to with it and dive into all of the details, that's not gonna be an option with this right off the bat. But just overall, I really have been surprised about how nice this machine is. It definitely is on the higher end in terms of price, but it also is higher end in terms of capability and just overall build quality. Now, speaking of the Otour machine, I've also done a full review of that one as well, and we're gonna jump into that right now. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.